Before we start, we need to import all from Scala Util. And by this, we get our algebraic data type Ether, which has two type parameters, namely E and A. And we also get our data constructor left and our data constructor right. That means Ether encodes that functions may return a failure value. In this case, the value has the type E or the correct value. In this case, the value has the type A. It's always the one or the other, it's never both. So it's always a kind of exclusive or semantic. And in fact, older versions of cats uh, had exactly this X or data type. But this type was replaced by strictly using Scala Util Ether together with some syntax enrichments provided via implicits from, from cats. So if you want to create a write, then you could call ether.write. So with write, we always mean the write or the correct value. And this acts as some kind of smart constructor for, for write. And in a similar fashion, you can call ether.left and this encodes the, the failure value. So this ether.left acts as some kind of smart constructor for left. So the ether type has some similarities with, with the option type. The main difference is that in the in the in the non case from option you you cannot transport any any additional messages say you have an option and you want to transport an error message this is what you cannot do with an option in this case you should use a left value from ether so and in general no there are not many cases on, on where you ex we need to pattern match on an ether. Treat pattern matching as some kind of implementation detail because ether provides you with uh, a lot of combinators you can use for, uh, for, for, for all, all your, your cases. And also good news, ether forms a monad. That means you can compose multiple, eth multiple ethers into one ether. So let's get started. First I'll show you how to create a few simple ethers. You can create an ether from a condition, in this case false. So here down in the terminal, as always, I have bloop running. There you can see the condition evaluates to, fall, to false and the throwable is wrapped in a left value, which is what we expected. In the same way, you can create an ether from an option. In, in this case, you have to provide a left value when the option evaluates to none. So that is probably what we what we expected. So now we want to write a few function for parsing numbers and then we want to combine them using uh, exploiting the fact that ether forms a monad. So first I add a simple type alias for an ether. And then the first function simply 
checks if a string is convertible to an integer. So you can do it somehow like this, string to int, and then you can call to ether. So that's one, one way we could do it, and um, in fact ether has a, a function for doing the same without explicitly using a try from the Scala library. Ether catch non-fatal. So both are completely the same. Someone like 34. <coughs> we can see that uh, comes as a right. So now we have a function which uh, which gives us an integer in the success case and now we want to combine them to form an addition So here we, we, we use a for comprehension which only describes the happy path through the monad and actually we are not restricted in any way how often we want to combine ether values. We can do that as often as we want without, without, fear, without any fear of blowing the call stack. That's, that's, uh, that's a feature of cats that uh, this will not happen. So when we call it, so 34, and 8, and we get a uh, right with 42, which is what we expected. You saw already that we can compose multiple ethers using a for comprehension into a new ether. We can, of course, use also flat map directly and the difference between the for comprehension and flat map is that in flat map you not only describe the happy path like in the for comprehension but you can also decide about how to continue the chain in in the left case so i'll show you the code and uh, explain again afterwards So that gives us that gives us two. So um, a monadic when you when you call about when you talk about monads, uh, that means in general that um, in a chain of multiple computations, the later computations, in our case, it's a, an ether computation, can depend on the result of earlier computations. So this is what we usually call monadic sequencing and you can see this in the in the example the 
the first monetic call is is add and if that is successful it calls flat map with the success value given to to the parameter and here in flat map you can again decide how you want to continue the chain so in the success in the in the success case we wrap it in a right and in the other case we wrap a throwable in a left So uh, the operations we saw up to this point, they all um, operated within an ether and yeah, actually at some point we want to leave the ether. So if we want to do that, we can fold the values together. We can call left map, which maps in the left case. and we fold together to a string. And here we can see a value was correct too. So if we change that here, so that the overall value is, is uh, smaller than zero, then we fold, we fold to the other side. So that's all I have for today. I hope it was a bit helpful for you and I would be happy about some comment on my blog or on the YouTube channel. See you, bye bye.